Kim Wumi Ambode, the immediate past governor of Lagos State, has taken the Lagos State House of Assembly to court over a probe of the procurement of 820 buses by his administration. The ex-governor asked the State High Court to stop the beat by the State House of Assembly to probe him. In a suit filed by his lawyer, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Ambode is also asking the court to order the Assembly not to compel him in any manner whatsoever, accusing the state's lawmakers of deliberate misrepresentation of facts. I still have in the studio Christian Wogu, legal practitioner. Thank you very much for your thank time. You, thank you, Felicity. What do you make of this entire case? That, that, was it necessary for the ex-governor to go to court? Well, let's start by agreeing that the House of Assembly is fulfilling their duty to, of oversight probe. and to probe. Um, but then, where this probe is perceived, either by the defendant, that's um, the past governor, or by the public as witch hunting, it becomes, it, 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 it assumes another signature. So that's on one hand. On the other hand, the governor has a right to seek the refuge of the court. Of the court. Uh, so it's, it's, it's all about rights, duties, responsibilities. Now, the House believes they have a right to probe. And then the, govern the ex-governor says, well, the circumstances of this probe is questionable, and I can't do anything myself. So please, court. Help me here. So it's, it's very healthy for, for it, the it, it, Going to the court, the court has now said maintain status quo. But going to the court, isn't that going to infringe on the legitimate responsibility of the State House of Assembly? How do we reconcile this two? That's exactly where I started by saying that if this legitimate responsibility is perceived by the defendant as which hunting, or even by the public, you know, they are reserved. They feel like, oh, what, what's happening? Um, Assuming this is the case, are you just picking, like, um, point and kill? Uh, so in that case, if the governor believes, or the ex-governor believes, that uh, the, the circumstances of this probe is infringing on his rights, is very correct. Okay, let's also court. clear. Is there something to be probed? Apparently, yes. And who is key in that administration? It's the former governor, right? If the House is to get to get um, a conclusion to their investigation, they require the presence of the governor. Wouldn't you say that the act of going to court might be interpreted, on the other hand, as, you know, somebody that has something to hide? Okay, you know, as a matter of fact, as a lawyer, I am not really... Uh, it's, it's not advisable to begin to uh, delve into a matter that is in court um, because sub it's, it's sub judice is in the court. But you know, uh, what we are looking at is should he have gone to court? And what is he saying from the published uh, statement of um, claim? He's saying, look, um, 820 bosses are in question here, and the House is saying he didn't follow due process to have made those purchases. And then he is saying, I followed due process to have made those purchases. Now, one great thing I looked at when I was studying the system, I said, look, the challenge we have here is not a situation where the house is not saying the 820 buses were not purchased. So it didn't go through the approved. It's just that it didn't go through. So the, the, the house can see the 850 buses, 820 buses. They, 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 of course, money have been spent. They're not even saying that it was overpriced. Over, they're just saying it didn't go through. So it's a matter of interpretation. And the only uh, organ of government that can interpret in this situation, I believe, are, are the courts. Now, when the court finishes, if the court says, Ambode, go to this house and be probed, he will have to go and be probed. And if the court says, well, um, we don't see any value in all of this process. That's uh, democracy for you. Our courts today, I, I actually have another question, but what you said is um, making me ask this. Our courts today are known to be slow. 
in the dispensation of justice. And this administration is four years. They need to get some sort of results for them to proceed with their work, to know where things are and how they can apply funds. I'm just assuming that is the case. So what happens if this court rules and Ambode is still unsatisfied and goes to another court, wouldn't it rubbish the entire point of conducting a probe of something that should ideally be made accountable for? You see, well, you're raising multiple issues here, but let me just take one or two that may resolve a couple more. Now, um, that's the beauty of the rule of law. When you hear rule of law, rule of law, rule of law, this, even the slowness of the courts, it's because um, somebody says that justice hastened is justice crushed. And so you find that um, it's, it's basically law playing out. At the end of the day, justice will manifest, even if it takes time. Okay, but this is not the only probe he's been, um, I mean, the only issue he's been probed for. He's been probed um, investigating other projects like the Immortal Rice uh, Mail, Oshodi Transport Exchange, LED UK Street Lights Project. These are among others, and this was executed in the second half of his administration. Now, what happens to the other probe? Because oh, everything we seem to be talking about is the uh, 820 boxes. No, you see, one beautiful thing again about all of this probe is somebody is saying that this governor did this. All of these projects you mentioned, you and I have seen them. So they are not like things in the air. So this is one governor that did things. So he's being probed for the things he did, he executed. I think that really he has great defense. I think that um, if he, I, I don't see him, I don't see those probes swallowing Ambode because he has things to show. Uh, but again, it's for him to uh, determine whether this suit, will, because there, nothing stops the suit, a suit from being enlarged to accommodate every other thing. So it's between him and his lawyers. Okay, let's talk about the misrepresentation that Ambody mentioned. Um, in his case, he talked about the fact that during the House proceedings, that he was vilified and issues were misrepresented uh, by the members. And at the end, they now resolved to constitute that ad hoc committee. Did the House pro uh, proceedings indeed vilify? Did you read the um, offshoot of the yes, House see, proceedings? Is, did, it, did it? You see, Does he have a point? His, the major, these are all the issues the courts will ultimately determine. But the point he is raising is that the people that are accusing him are ending up being members of the committee. So they are going to be judges in their own cause. And these are legal issues. Uh, uh, so uh, to that extent, the, the, the substance the court will ultimately resolve. But why he's going to court, I, I think that um, it's, it's not unreasonable for him to say, look, uh, those that are accusing me are the... Uh, so ultimately, you can see that the result the committee will come out, will come out with is already predictable. Uh, will the House obey court order if they are instructed, in your opinion? Look, will will is, they? Look, see, you see, if there is consequence for disobedience of court order... We're in Nigeria, sir. Yes, I know, I know. No, these consequences... In, you know, you've seen, we've seen a lot of things playing out in this country that sometimes the people that thought they were powerful ultimately begin to see that... The you know, law is stronger. The, the law is ultimately stronger. So it's just a matter of time. Uh, I think that the, the court should be obeyed. It just should be obeyed. That's, that, that, it gives dignity to a government and it gives dignity to a state and dignity to a nation. Okay. Now, on, on, the, on the flip side, there's been those that have expressed worry over the way former governors are always uh, put on the chopping board with the media by new administrations uh, intending probing uh, to probe uh, the works that they have done. Over the years, some of these probes have amounted to something. But majority of them end up being nothing. And then you know, the person's name has already been solid uh, in the papers. Is it possible? For us, or the House, uh, the House members, to re-strategize in ways to probe these governors, maybe quietly, and then when they have reports, they have 
all their facts. They can now come out with their findings and say, this is what this person has done. This is what this person has done. As against putting the person in a position where the person says, you're, 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 you're rubbishing my image that I have worked hard to sustain. Now, now you must view your perspective from power play, from the perspective of power play. Now, what usually happens is that if a party succeeds a party, everything is calm. If it succeeds itself, further there is calmness. And then if another party succeeds another party, then all of this whole probe thing But the case up. of Almode and... No, no, we're still coming to that. <laughs> I mean, situations where maybe somebody who is influential in the system uh, I mean, it becomes like a, this, this is uh, an erring child. Let's find a way and call him to order. Now, it's still the same power play that's, that's playing now because if you had been a compliant child, you find that everything would have just been quiet. And you and I wouldn't be here spending time discussing. What are the likely uh, outcome, in your opinion, based on what we have now? What are the likely options, either way or the other way, at the end? As when a lawyer, I can't really tell you because there are judges that these things are before. They will come out with something. They will, and it's not just about what the court comes out with. It's the reason for which they came out with those things. Just like we are all waiting for the reason why no merit was found in Articles' and uh, case. Uh, uh, appeal to the Supreme Court. Now, the court has told us there is no merit. Now, every lawyer in the whole world, possibly, is now standing by to see Same. what the are the reasons. That those reasons are as important, if not more important, than the decision itself. So ultimately, the court will tell us what will be the outcome and give us the reasons for their decision. Final thoughts on this? Um, I think that we should, uh, basically what I said earlier, let's try and not hit up the polity because of power play. Now, if these things are done altruistically, that is, for, nation, for the purpose of nation building, fine. A governor that is seen to, not to have aligned ought to be probed. That's the duty of the House. But if it is done in order to cut down somebody to size, you know, bring the person to a particular size that you think that's the size it should be. It shouldn't be bigger than a particular size. He said, no, no. Thank you very much, sir, for your time on the program. It's appreciated. Welcome. We will take a short break for plus reports now. And when we return, I will give my take. Just stay with us. The federal government has said it is working to inject sanity into the social media space which has gone haywire. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, disclosed this at a media briefing on Tuesday in Abuja. According to him, no responsible government will sit by and allow fake news and hate speech to dominate its media space because the menace can lead to a national conflagration. The minister solicited the support of the media to banish fake news and hate speech from the media space. No amount of attacks, sponsored or otherwise, will stop us from implementing these recommendations. Two, that any responsible journalist has nothing to fear from these recommendations. Thirdly, that only anarchists and non-patriots will kick against these recommendations. We, we said it several times, we have absolutely no intention to stifle the, the media. We have no intention to gag journalists, but we do not want to make equate hate speech with free, with, 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 with free speech, there must be a point where a nation must responsibly take action. Otherwise, it will simply see it's the, the, the very fabric of society being torn apart. In Rwanda, over 800,000 lives were lost to hate speech alone. In Nigeria here, We've had you know, instances of pandemonium and confusion. At the end of the day, it's all about fake news, 
or hate speech. So for those who want to engage in disseminating fake news and uh, hate speech, there will be no rest for them. We will make sure that these laws are implemented and that anybody who runs foul of these new recommendations will be punished accordingly. The concerns raised about Operation Positive Identification is very valid in my opinion and I believe further action is required. When the people speak this loudly, a listening government must take action before it gets louder and messier. That's basically my thoughts this evening. Thank you very much for watching. Plus Politics returns same time tomorrow to join us again. Bye for now.